Well, hello, beautiful warriors of the internet. Chris Wood here from Rising Phoenix Mental Health Channel. And I'm going to introduce to you Sue Fira. I hope I pronounced that correct. From Hopeful Tribe Mental Health Channel. And uh, she did an interview with me a while back on what it was like to work as a police officer in the high Arctic. In the midst of all that, it was broken down into a couple segments with mental health uh, and the stigma behind that, uh, as well as policing the Arctic. So I'm going to give you like a, a break up part one, two, and then the actual interview. So I hope you enjoy. I will put the links in the comments so that if you wish to actually go and check out Sue's channel, uh, she's amazing. Lots of heart and passion and really cares about mental health and where it's going. I also want to let you know that Sue is going to be hosting 24 Hours of Comfort, which is going to be a collaboration of many mental health creators on YouTube uh, for the Thanksgiving long weekend holiday in the United States. It's going to take part on November the 24th and uh, the videos will start to be released at seven o'clock. I believe that is Pacific time. And uh, yeah, you'll get a chance to uh, take a look at it. So I hope you enjoy it. I hope you stay tuned. The link will be in the comments. Uh, just about the stigma around PTSD and stuff. Oh yeah. Well, and that that's another reason why I wanted to start a YouTube channel is just to get the word out there. There's I, I will put my uh, videos into certain groups on Facebook that are basically law enforcement groups and whatnot. Oh, that's so good. Yeah, and uh, so that, you know, and I've, and I've actually had some feedback. I've had people reach out to me and, um, you know, want to talk and they, they feel that it's safe to talk to because, to talk to me, because it's just... It's getting better. It, it's better than it was, say, 20 years ago. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's going to take some time. It's they're they're slowly they're slowly RCMP is slowly getting involved with this mental health. Um, they're getting on board, but it, it's just again, it just it's going to take some time for that to happen. So anyway, yeah, it's it, it's. Uh, I was talking about the stigma thing, but so that's been helpful. Um, it's been very uh, therapeutic, like I mentioned before. And I learned a lot. I've learned a lot about myself. Like, you know, the average person, you know, you, you'd ask them this question. So, you know, who are you? What are you about? Why do you do the things that you do? Have you ever thought about that before? You know, like um, you get into a situation where you're getting really pissed off. Say you're driving somewhere and there's a traffic jam and you're getting really pissed off that somebody just, cut in front of you, you know, <laughs> you're not moving. And, and uh, why are you reacting that way? What is it? What, what was that that just happened, that action that made you react that way? I never thought like that before. I used to just, to, you know, blinders, you know, what's in front of me, you know, running around with my head cut off like a chicken, just, you know, trying to just manage life. Mm -hmm. I, never, I never stopped and, and just, as they say, smell the flowers or take a breath. I never did that. Yeah. And I bet you if we were to do a poll, you know, I bet you mo a lot of people aren't doing that. They're not taking the time to just look at life, like be, be aware of your surroundings, be aware, like look past what's in front of you. And, um, I think that's probably the biggest thing that I've been blessed with in this whole journey is just being able to know who you are and being and being self-aware. Now, in the same sense, it's actually kind of shitty because you now know why you're feeling the way you're feeling. And now it's having to deal with those feelings and being in those feelings and sitting in those feelings. And it's like, you know, some days I just wish that I didn't know any of that shit. And I just kind of continued on like, you know, Right, matrix, right. For example, you know, being in the matrix and not and not yeah. and no not having to deal with life. Yeah. On this plane. Yeah. Totally. Um, I I feel like uh there's a couple things I want to share with you. One is, you know, I I totally believe that there's a lot of mental health stigma in on police forces that totally makes sense. Um however 
I worked mostly in nonprofits as a therapist since 1987. And there's that same mental health stigma in nonprofits, in, in, in like clinical nonprofits, places where we're, the whole business is providing clinical services. <laughs> and, and there was this always the stigma and the sense that if you started to be negatively impacted by the work, because I mostly worked out on the streets with people who were unhoused and severely oh, wow. mentally ill and stuff oh, wow. like that, um, that you were weak. There was something wrong with you mm -hmm. if it started to get to you. Yeah. So one of my visions um, for you know, growing hopeful tribe is that eventually it'll create enough income for me to open up a retreat for people who are, you know, suffering from burnout and PTSD or OSI, like you were talking about, who really need some time to reflect, like you were also talking about. Most of us never get the opportunity to reflect we're just so busy surviving, you know? I